um, I'm Nisreen Ahmed. I'm a research scientist at Intel Labs, and I'm going to talk about exact and estimation of local edge centering graph lock counts and their applications in machine learning. Uh, this is joint work with colleagues from uh, Intel Labs and also from PARC, uh, Ted Wolke from Intel Research Labs, and also Ryan Rossi from Xerox PARC. So uh, definitely graphs provide a very rich data representation and allow us to study phenomena across a variety of domains. Uh, from social networks to biological networks to the web to the internet, there are so many different applications for graphs. And graph mining come at the heart of all these uh, 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 domains and applications uh, which provide us with a lot of techniques for studying these domains. So today I'm going to talk about a particular topic in graph, in, the, in graph mining which is about graphlets. So graphlets are basically defined as any small k-vertex induced subgraph, which is basically we refer to graphlets by the full distribution of all possible k-subgraphs. There are all other related uh, topics as well called motifs. Sometimes the two terms, graphlets and motifs, are used interchangeably. <laughs> motifs usually refers to those particular graphlets that occur in real world networks with higher frequencies than what you can actually find in randomly generated networks. The topic has been uh, first introduced by Milo et al, where uh, the, uh, the authors found that it was the simple building blocks of complex networks. They studied uh, a variety of different networks and they applied graphlets in, in different uh, domains such as the food web, genetic, neural web, and other networks, and they found that there are distinct graphlets that differentiate between all these different networks. However, the topic of graphlets itself has been more attractive even far beyond that. So for example, there has been a lot of applications for uh, uh, the use of graphlets as features in machine learning tasks for different machine learning tasks from biological networks to social to internet. Such as for example, in biological networks, there, is a lot of, uh, there are so many applications for graphlets to be used for network alignment, protein function prediction. In social networks, definitely one of the most uh, common graphlets is the triangles, which is used for tri triad analysis, role discovery, and community detection. And even it was used for uh, in uh, computer networks and web uh, graphs for spam detection, uh, uh, where they use basically graphlets as features or certain types of graphlets as features to detect web spam. So in conclusion, so uh, uh, graphlets have been very useful as a set of features for a various uh, set of machine learning tasks, such as anomaly detection, role discovery, relational learning, and clustering, among many others. So the topic that we are going to talk about today is mainly related to the local graphlet counting, which is very related to how can we extract those features for uh, machine learning tasks. So what we are trying to do here is that given an input graph, we will give it to, to some sort of a technique called local graphlet decomposition, where we would like to extract the features based on the node or the level. So what you'd extract at the end will be a feature vector of all the graphlet counts uh, on the node level or the, or, or the edge level. So formally, we can define that as if you have given a family of graphlets of a certain size k, and uh, which means that you have all possible subgraphs of a certain size, and you have an input graph of uh, some maximum degree delta, then the goal is to count all the number of appearances or embeddings of each graphlet in the input graph. And you count them per node or per edge. So there are so many variety of methods that you could think about to, in order to perform this task. So one of them, which is the simplest way, is to say, well, let's enumerate all possible graphlets. And so that definitely exhaustive enumeration is extremely expensive, especially when the graph size, even, even for very small graph sizes, like even with 100 nodes <laughs> or something like that. And that's because it will run exponentially in order uh, the number of nodes to the power k, where k is actually the subgraph size. Another more like careful approach would say basically let's count the graphlets for each node and uh, uh, so we will do this local counting for every node so we'll only search the node neighborhood and this is still expensive for larger k. Unfortunately, many of the methods that actually exist in this area are not practical and they scale only for graphs with few hundred and thousands of nodes and edges. So what we propose here is basically an edge-centric parallel uh, a framework that's fast and also space efficient. So what we try to do is that we try to search for the graphlets in the edge neighborhood, so only in the lo local neighborhood. 
And that allows us to uh, achieve an embarrassingly parallel approach in order to parallelize all the different uh, um, counting that happen on, on the different edges. Our approach is very generalizable, so it's generalized to any su subgraph k. However, here we actually show for certain subgraphs uh, of size 3 and 4. So what we are interested in is that we have all these sets of features, which is in total about 15 graphlet features of, of all possible 3 vertex and 4 vertex subgraphs, and we are interested in counting them. So how can we do that? So the first thing in our approach is that we search the edge neighborhood, and for each edge we try to find the triangles. Our approach for finding the triangles also give us some sort of categorization over the nodes, and that categorization basically generalizes how every node in the neighborhood connects to the, to the edge E. So for example, if the node is forming a triangle here, then the node is, a is gonna belong to the triangle group. If the node is actually connecting to E as a star, then the node will, will be basically uh, in the star uh, uh, pattern group. Then once we find the triangles and we perform this sort of categorization, in the, in the second step, we count only uh, certain types of four node graphlets, which is basically uh, the cliques, the four cycles, and the tail triangles. So only three of these that we are actually have to search for them. Uh, in the space. However, the space itself is pruned because we have performed this type of categorization in the first place, in the first step. Now, for this, uh, the third step, after we have done uh, step one and step two, we use combinatorial relationships in order to compute the counts of other graphlets in constant time. So out of 15 graphlet features, we only count four graphlet features and we obtain everything else in constant time. How can we obtain everything else in constant time? Naturally, uh, if you think about graphlets, they somehow have form some certain uh, relationships between each other. So this is some sort of a transition model or a diagram for the four node uh, uh, graphlets where we move from the right to the left by, adding, by removing one edge and we move from, uh, uh, from, sorry, from the left to the right by adding one edge and from the left uh, and from the right to the left by adding one edge. So that means that every, uh, as we can see, every graphlet is connected to, every, uh, to some other graphlets by some sort of a relationship. So there are pairwise relationships among the different graphlets. And the goal is that if you can actually model these uh, relationships by equations, then all what you need is to count a few of them and then you get the rest from the, from the model itself or from the equations. So that's exactly what we do. We count the few patterns and then we use the relationships or transitions in order to count the rest of the graphlets in constant time. So what's the advantage of this technique? The first advantage is definitely it's fast. You don't need to count everything. So you have 15 graphlet features. You don't need to count them all. You only count four of them. The second thing is that it is also space efficient because all what you need to store is going to be only four graphlet features and then whenever you need to query a certain node or edge, then you are, all what you need to do is to uh, go, you know, compute with the equations in constant time. So it saves you a lot of storage, uh, especially uh, that we have to count these things over uh, graphs that are of billion nodes and edges. So, so it's both face, fast and space efficient, time and space efficient. Yeah, to give you uh, some notion of this, how these um, uh, uh, connections or equations work, so this is the set of equations for the three ver vertex graphlets. So the first equation basically is the triangle count. So x1 represents how many triangles incident to an edge E. x2 relates to x1, which is the number of triangles via other um, um, uh, uh, basically features or other properties, which is basically the, the degree of the node U and the degree of the node V. So in, in essence, what you could say is that if I have the triangle, the number of triangles already <laughs> given, then I can easily derive x2 because I already know the degree of the node and the degree uh, of every node for the edge, which is basically degree of u and degree of v. And in the same way, if you co are concerned with the third type of graphlet here, which is x3, it also relates to the number of triangles and the number of nodes as well as x2. So in some sense, you could say that all what I need to store here is the number of triangles, or what I need to count is only the number of triangles. To generalize things a little bit better, uh, so what, how, how can we do that for the four node graphlets, which is, are more, usually much more expensive on, and, and also uh, harder to do? So this is an example of how can you relate four clicks to four chordal cycles. So we have a particular edge in concern here, and every four click or every four chordal cycle can be easily defined on only the space of all possible triangles, <laughs> which means that 
because cliques are themselves, uh, uh, triangles themselves are cliques of size three, so cliques, four cliques generally generalize over triangles. So that means that all that you need to see is to basically search for cliques in the space of all possible triangles that connect to the node E. And then both of the two patterns are bounded above by the number of triangles incident to E choose two. So if, essentially, if you have the number of tri cliques and the number of triangles, then you can easily get the number of chordal cycles in constant time. And so we have a whole list of uh, equations like that that you could actually use for uh, obtaining all the other different graphlets. And so it's, it gives you extremely uh, uh, much more scalability and also ext extremely space efficient. Now, one of the important questions that uh, it's also important to ask is that if you have the, the counts on the edges themselves, how can you generalize to node features or node graphlet frequencies? Uh, so uh, the, the idea here is that if you had the count themselves over the edges, then it's very, most of the time, it will be very easy aggregation to obtain the counts over the nodes themselves. Maybe with some normalization constant, but overall it's much easier. However, the reverse is not true. If you had the counts over the nodes, it's much harder to be able to generalize to the edges. And in fact, most of the time you'll have to run the whole algorithm again. So it's more efficient actually to do edge-centric rather than node-centric. That's in addition to other definitely advantages of edge-centric approaches. So we talked about efficient methods, but those methods are exact. So they count everything exactly, they extract the features exactly. Now, how about if we introduce some sort of a sampling in order to do some sort of approximation and actually achieve much better uh, performance? So sampling is a very appealing technique for uh, achieving uh, uh, good performance, uh, uh, especially when you are dealing with subgraph counts for, for larger graphs like of billion nodes and edges. So what we proposed here is that we basically try to do, instead of actually searching for the full neighborhood, we are going to search for a sampled part of the neighborhood. So we sample from the distribution of the neighbors uh, 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 basically with replacement, which means that you could sample the same thing multiple times, and then with some probability, which could be uniform or non-uniform, the, the framework itself generalizes. Once you sample, uh, the problem with sampling is that if you sample, you are going to lose some information. So in order to account for this loss, what we do is that we provide also an unbiased statistical estimation framework with provable error bounds that allows us to uh, get un unbiased estimates of this. So what I mean by unbiased estimates is that if you estimate the counts, the expected value of the estimated value will be in general very almost basically closely to, uh, related to the count of the graphlet itself, if you were to count it exactly. Uh, one more thing that's also uh, important with respect to the sampling, so this is basically a table of the complexity of the algorithm. So this is a complexity if you would like to run the four click or the four cycle or all of them. And so what we try to do here is that we try to generalize basically whether you are doing exact or uh, versus uh, approximation. So delta upper bound is basically the sampled maximum degree, which could be the maximum degree itself or it could be less than the maximum degree if you are actually doing sampling. And so that means that if you can actually do the sampling, then you can shrink the upper bound over the maximum degree of the graph, and then that will reduce the total uh, complexity or the asymptotic complexity of the algorithm itself. Now, to give you some notion of the experiments and the results, uh, so that's basically here we obtained uh, or we computed the average relative error for uh, the top 1,000 highest degree edges, which is basically the edges that have the, the biggest neighborhood. And uh, we used a sampling with replacement approach, which is with probability 0.01. It was uniform. And what we did here is that we computed uh, the relative error, average relative error for both uh, the graphlet frequency distribution, which is the normalized distribution, versus also the counts. And then the error overall was extremely small, even for a 1% sample uh, uh, size. Also, we computed Kolmogorov distance and L1 normalized distance, which are basically uh, uh, distance me measures that are used for uh, computing the, the differences between different distribu statistical distributions. Uh, another important thing is basically the parallel scaling. So here we obtained, we were able to see like near linear uh, uh, scale up, uh, scalability, strong scaling results. So what we do here is that we uh, compute the speed up between the serial method and the, the, the scalable, the, uh, the parallel approach for different number of cores. 
So as we can see, strong scaling results, which is almost linear, uh, linear as we increase the number of cores. So the algorithm itself scales. Finally, the runtime uh, uh, here, uh, this is the number of seconds for running the exact methods. So that's for the three graphlets, that's for the four click, that's for the four cycle, that's for the tail triangle, and that's for all of them. So overall, for a variety of networks, we take only a few seconds for networks that are actually millions of nodes and edges, which wasn't probably uh, available for, for so many of the machine learning techniques before. Uh, at the end, uh, I would like to take a moment to talk about some of the applications that are extremely important uh, uh, where graphlets could be useful. So uh, graphlets could be also useful for real-time visual analytics, uh, where they allow us to uh, uh, observe or find interesting patterns and insight in the graph. So this is a visualization of the human disease networks, which is a famous network between, network, uh, between different disorders and disease genes, and uh, linked by their known associations. So what we did here is that we basically ranked the different nodes and links by, their, uh, dif by different graphlet counts. So we ranked the nodes by, and colored them by the triangle counts, and we ranked the links by the, uh, the number of four stars. So quickly, because we did this type of ranking or weighting, we were able to see that there are uh, certain important patterns in this graph, which is basically certain hubs or stars in the graph. Uh, of certain diseases that are linked together, uh, namely colon cancer, leukemia, and deafness, which is also aligns with what uh, um, you know, other people found in the same network before. <laughs> so that shows how graphlets could be actually useful even for, for, for visual analytics. And if we can compute these graphlets fast, then that will allow us to also do uh, uh, interactive uh, uh, visual graph mining, uh, uh, which would be useful for so many applications. Now, the second question that's also exciting and important is that, okay, if you want to do this visual analytics extremely fast, so one way is to actually use sampling to extremely speed up the approach, uh, especially when you are doing it for graphs that are extremely large. So what we did here is that we basically compare the visualization between the exact and estimated method, method for tick routers, where we link things by the four, number of four clicks. So we were able to see like almost like no uh, uh, and, uh, no noticeable difference between the different uh, uh, colors of the links themselves. In summary, we provided a framework for the local graphlet counting problem. It's extremely fast and efficient, and also we provided a, a whole unbiased estimation approach uh, uh, based on sampling and provable error bounds, and it's extremely important for many applications. Code and data are available online, uh, and these are the references. Thanks for your attention.